Welcome to Brecon High School News. It is Friday the 12th of November. Good morning. Coming up in this week's bulletin, Thought for the Week, presented by Mrs Wilson. Remembrance 2021. But first, the news. Next week sees the launch of Anti-Bullying Week. During the week, pupils will be shown videos made by the Anti-Bullying Group, who will also be giving presentations during next week's Junior Assemblies. As in previous years, make sure to wear odd socks during the week to show your support. S3 assemblies take place on Monday, period 4 Dunn, Farnell 2 and Menmuir 2, period 5, Farnell 1 and Menmuir 1. S1 assemblies are on Tuesday, period 1, Farnell, period 2, Dunn and Menmuir. S2 assemblies are on Wednesday, period 1, Farnell and Menmuir, period 2, Dunn. Would you like to join the team of student library assistants? If you're reliable, enthusiastic and hardworking, then one of the four new posts could be yours. You'll be required to work break or lunch one day a week between Monday and Thursday. Closing date for applications is Friday the 26th of November. For more information, see the Student Bulletin Classroom. Congratulations to Eva Hutchin. She's the very first winner of a Pretelier Platinum Award, gaining a free day at Wildshore Aqua Park in Dundee. Come along to the Languages Corridor on Wednesday afternoon to join virtual tours from some of the most spectacular locations around the world. Tours will be presented on the big screen in G7 from the end of period 7 until 4.45. Look out for posters around the school for more information or contact Miss Tennant to sign up. If you're interested in a career in the Army, work experience opportunities are available for all senior pupils. Contact your PCS teacher for more information. Dundee University would like to hear from pupils who are thinking about a career in medicine. Junior pupils can join in the online event Exploring Careers in Healthcare on the afternoon of Saturday, November 20th. Senior pupils can learn about the support available to help them attend Dundee University by asking their mentor or PCS teacher about the REACH program. Senior pupils who are thinking of leaving BHS at Christmas should check out the courses offered by Dundee and Angus College. There are a huge variety of courses available in January, including two new accelerated HNC qualifications in business and travel and tourism. The college have renewed their school leaver pledge any pupil that submits their application by January 7th is guaranteed a place. The Yearbook Committee would like to remind all S6 pupils to complete the Google Doc which has been shared with them. Voting opens on Monday for Choice for Angus. Angus residents will choose which community projects will get access to funding. Pupils are asked to click the link that has been emailed to them and to vote for the two Brecon projects, Brecon Healthcare Group Beat the Street Brecon and Brecon High School Community Supported Agriculture. Now it's time for Thought for the Week with Mrs Wilson. Hi, good afternoon, it's Mrs Wilson. So delighted to get a little bit of time just to say hi, to check in and see how you're all doing, but also just to be able to say that as we wander around our building and time spent together, lots and lots of young people have got lots and lots of worries, things on their mind, things that might be a little bit tricky. So my big message, my big ask of all of you is just take a little bit of time to be kind. Why am I saying that? If you think about our, our, our values as a school, being friendly, being inclusive, that means paying attention to the people around us. So if you do see someone that maybe is in a bit of a tricky situation or needs a little bit of help or maybe just needs a little bit of a friendly word or letting them know that you're there for them, be kind. And I think to be kind actually helps a lot of people feel a lot better about some of the things that, they, that we all have to encounter every day. Um, so as a school community, being kind, and I'm looking out for those tiny little acts of kindness because we should applaud that in each other. Our last segment this week is our yearly remembrance film. This year's theme is Unsung Heroes. Each November at Brecon High School, we make an effort to organise a remembrance event. This will be the second and hopefully the last year in which we will be observing social distance. Those of you in S3 to S6 will recall that our remembrance event normally takes place in the theatre with pupils from every year group represented. A guest speaker addresses the assembly and gives their thoughts on a theme relating to remembrance. This year our theme was suggested by Miss Nicholl who had been working with her pupils to find out and write about unsung heroes, the ordinary people from every walk of life and background who have in some way made a sacrifice in the service of their country or their community in time of conflict. 
There are so many stories of individual courage and you will find them in displays along the corridors of the school. Too many to cover in one film. So we have selected three separate stories to focus on which reflect the diversity of those who have been caught up in war and conflict. The first is the story of Wojciech, the bear, who spent much of his life serving as a soldier in the Polish army. The second story is about Elsie Ingalls, a Scottish doctor who served during the First World War in Serbia and France. The third story is about the Gurkhas, soldiers from Burma, or now known as Myanmar, who have served with the British Army in many conflicts over the years, and many of whom recently had difficulty achieving British citizenship, which they had been promised by the British government. This year is also the 100-year anniversary of the Poppy Appeal, which began back in 1921 as a charity to raise money to help veterans of war and their families to rebuild their lives after playing their part in the armed forces. To mark this occasion, the school took part in Poppy Scotland's Light Up Red tribute, in which buildings across Scotland have been lit up with red lights. The school building has been bathed in red light each evening and will be so until Remembrance Sunday on the 14th of November. Remember me, duty call, and I went to war. I thought I'd never fire a gun before. I prayed the place for your new day as all my dreams were blown away. Remember me, we all stood true as whistle blew and faced the shell and stench of hell. Now battle's done, there is no sound, our bones do clatter beneath the ground. We cannot see or smell or hear, there is no death or hope or feel. Remember me, once we like you, we laughed and talked and ran and walked and do the things that you all do. But now we lie in the road so neat beneath the soil beneath your feet. Remember me in the mud and gore and the blood of the war we fought and fell and moved no more. Remember me, I am not dead, I'm just a voice within your head. Someone was singing up a trusty stair, a fragment of a song one sweet spring day when twelve o'clock was ringing through the summer square. There was a lad, both frank and free, come doon the bonny bank so dee, with tartan played and buckled sheen, but he'll come nae mare to her tune. He dwells within a fair country, where great ones do him courtesy. They've gien him a golden croon, but he'll come nae mare to her tune. No one is singing up a twisty stair, as quiet as a sacrament the November day. Can you hear it swinging, the little ghostly air? Hear it sadly stray. Through the messy square, tartan played and buckle chain, you'll come the mayor to her tune. Now we must go again back to the world, full of grey ghosts and voices of, me of men dying, and in the rain the sounding of last posts and lovers crying. Back to the old, back to the empty world. Now I put by the bugles and the drums and the worn spurs and the great swords they carried. Now I we made most lonely, proudly theirs, the men we married. Under the dome, the long roll of the drums. Now are the fallen, happy and sleep sound. Now in the end to us is come the pain. These who return will find the love they spend, but we are praying. Love of our lovers fallen who sleep sound. Now in our heart abides always our war. Time to bring us, no day for our forgetting. Never for us is folded war away. Dawn or sun setting, now in our hearts abides always a war. Every day, somewhere in the world, another unsung hero is born. Someone who is willing to lay his life on the line to save another living creature, to save on, on this wonderful planet of ours, to go out of their way and risk life and limb to save something. From danger and certain death, these unsung heroes don't want medals, glory or even fame. In fact, the, most could walk away afterwards without anyone ever knowing their name. It is not that they feel guilty, 
They just feel that they haven't done anything that is special or, some, or s something someone else wouldn't have probably done. Therefore, to all those unsung heroes, I knew a simple soldier boy who grinned at life in empty joy, slept soundly through the lonesome dark, and whistled early with the lark. In winter trenches cowed and glum, with crumps and lice and a lack of rum, he put a bullet through his brain, no one spoke of him again. He smug-faced crowds with kindling eye, who cheer when soldiers' lads march by. Sneak home and pray you'll never know the hell where youth and laughter go. In Flanders' fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, that mark our place and in the sky the lark so bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead short days ago, we live felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved and now we lie in Flanders' fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders' fields. After Germany attacked Russia, the Russians decided to release their Polish prisoners of war, who then began reforming into an army. In April 1942, several of these Polish units landed in Persia and began a trek through a mountainous area heading toward Egypt. The story goes that a group of soldiers happened on an Iranian shepherd boy who had found an orphan Syrian brown bear cub. Whether that's how it actually happens or not, the soldiers did acquire a bear cub during their journey. They named him Wojtek, meaning he who enjoys war or smiling warrior. The bear quickly became something of a mascot for the soldiers, and then much more. As the author of Wojtek the Soldier Bear, Gary Paulin, stated, The Polish soldiers had come from nothing and had lost everything during the war. The bear became so much more than just a mascot to them. He was a real boost to their morale. While Wojtek was young, the soldiers nursed him with condensed milk placed in empty vodka bottles, then fed him fruit, honey, and syrup until he was able to eat more solid foods. Knowing little about the care and feeding of bears, they eventually treated him as if he were just another soldier, including giving him beer rations, which quickly became his favorite beverage. His favorite pastime was wrestling his comrades, though he also enjoyed a good game of tug-of-war. Besides these activities, Wojtek enjoyed playing with other animals. He was best friends with a Dalmatian belonging to a British liaison officer. The two animals would play and wrestle together. In Palestine, Wojtek inadvertently helped capture a thief who broke into an ammunition compound. To the thief's surprise, besides ammunition, he found Wojtek, who often slept in there. Upon seeing the bear, the would-be thief made quite a commotion, which alerted the soldiers, who then arrested the man. Wojtek was rewarded with a bottle of beer. As the Polish army came closer to entering the war zone in Italy in 1943, the soldiers pondered the problem of Wojtek's status, in that if he was to continue to accompany them, they'd be bringing him to the front line. This problem came to a head in 1944 in Egypt when the soldiers were headed to Naples. The port authorities refused to let the bear board the ship. They solved the problem by giving Wojtek his own paybook, rank, and serial number. They even taught him how to salute like a proper soldier. After the paperwork was filed, he was officially a member of the Polish Army in the 22nd Artillery Supply Company of the Polish Second Corps, and he was now allowed on the ship. Wojtek soon proved he was more than just a mascot when, during the series of assaults known as the Battle of Monte Cassino, he put his strength to good use after being trained to carry heavy crates filled with mortar shells from the supply trucks, delivering them to the men operating the large guns on the front line. After the battle, a likeness of Wojtek holding a shell became the official badge of the 22nd Transport Company. The image was put on vehicles, flags, and uniforms. At the end of the war, about 3,000 Polish soldiers and their bear ended up being stationed in Berkwickshire, Scotland, for nearly two years. As the soldiers were demobilized in 1947 and sent home, they said some heart-wrenching goodbyes to Wojtek. For his part, Wojtek found a home in Edinburgh Zoo, where he became a popular attraction. Many of his Polish servicemen friends visited him at the zoo over the years. As one of the zookeepers there said, his old friends would come and visit, and occasionally they would jump the fence and give him a cuddle or a bottle of beer. If he heard the Polish language spoken, he would often perk up. In the wild, Syrian brown bears typically live to about 20 to 30 years old. 
However, in captivity, they can potentially live as long as 48 years, but it was not to be for Wojtek. He died in December of 1963 at the age of just 22. On the 100th anniversary, it's right that we reflect on the remarkable achievements of a remarkable woman. At a time when it was rare for women to enter any profession, Elsie pursued a career in medicine. As a doctor, she ensured that more and more women, both rich and poor, received a decent standard of health care. She organised and provided vital support for frontline troops during the First World War. In doing so, she demonstrated that women were more than capable of performing roles that they had previously been denied. And as a key member of the suffragist movement, Elsie was also at the forefront of campaigning for women's voting rights. 100 years since her death, Elsie's commitment to equality, solidarity and compassion remains an example and an inspiration to all of us. That is why on this anniversary, it's important that we celebrate the remarkable contribution that Elsie Ingalls made to Scotland, to the rest of the UK and indeed to the world. Dr Elsie Ingalls was a well-known doctor and active suffragette in Edinburgh in 1914, founding several hospitals. On the outbreak of war, she wrote to the War Office, offering her services as a doctor to the front line. Their response infuriated her. My good lady, they told her, go home and sit still. Elsie, of course, given her background, would be having none of this and quickly decided that basically if Britain didn't want to have women doctors and surgeons serving in frontline hospitals, then what she would do is, with the backing of the suffrage societies, she would set up her own female hospital units. Very, very quickly, the Belgians, the French, and in particular, the Serbs, all accepted. 1,500 women served in the Scottish women's hospitals in France, Corsica, Russia, and Serbia. Elsie Ingalls was taken as a prisoner of war in Serbia, and the women had to endure the Serbian retreat after the country was invaded. It was dangerous but also revolutionary work. Hospital units staffed entirely by women, from surgeons, doctors and nurses, down to cooks, drivers and clerks. Elsie's unfailing support for the people of Serbia led her to become the first woman awarded the Order of the White Eagle, the country's highest honour. It's now kept in Surgeons Hall Museum in Edinburgh. The Scottish women's hospitals coped with the worst typhus epidemic in history, with 150,000 people killed, as well as typhoid, cholera and the catastrophic injuries of trench warfare. Elsie sadly died of cancer in 1917. She never got to vote or to see the end of the war, but the Serbs treasure her memory. The Gurkhas are a unique group of soldiers from Nepal who have fought alongside British troops for the past 200 years. They come from a very hard environment and from a young age they grow up uh, knowing what it means to survive in, in, in brutal conditions. They carry this through into being soldiers and they're renowned for their grit and dedication to carrying out their duty. Bagta Singh Poon was a young Gurkha soldier from the Himalayan foothills who at the outbreak of World War II was serving in India and then was sent to Singapore as part of efforts to reinforce the island. Conditions as a Japanese POW were notoriously very, very difficult. The Gurkhas in particular had it tough because they were not regarded as prisoners of war but mere labourers, so they didn't have any of the normal rights afforded to soldier prisoners. So they were forced to work constantly with very little food uh, in very trying conditions. After Bagda Singh was liberated at the end of World War II, he continued to serve with the Gurkhas and showed a remarkable commitment to his duties. In a later citation for bravery, one of his senior officers even commented that Bagda Singh had clearly seen the Second World War as a missed opportunity to show his bravery and he was making up for lost time. 
I constantly see the extraordinary affection that the British public feels for these Gurkha veterans and that largely stems from their contribution to success in, in the world wars. For me, uh, Gurkha means maintaining the tradition, showing your loyalty and uh, following the footsteps of your forefathers. Thank you for your attention. Sports Roundup. Brecon S1 and S2 boys teams beat Montrose, but the girls narrowly lost. Brecon S1-2 boys rugby team beat Carnoustie, and the under-16 team did very well against a very experienced team. Senior netball team lost to a strong Lath Allen, but the S2 team in their first ever fixture got a superb draw with the last play of the game. Before we go, it's just time for Club Roundup. Lunchtime sports. Monday, netball shooting. Tuesday, table tennis and indoor fives. Thursday, dodgeball and badminton. After school sports. Tuesday, rugby and junior netball. Wednesday, climbing and senior netball. Thursday, indoor football. Friday, girls football and rugby, Strathmore Trust. Library clubs. Monday, comic club and mindfulness colouring. Tuesday, craft club. Wednesday, shape challenge. Thursday, book club. The Lego Club meets Tuesday lunchtime in L7. Creative Writing, Wednesday lunchtime in T2. Ukulele Club, Tuesday lunchtime G10 in the Music Department. Finally, a message for staff. If you have anything that you would like to have included in the bulletin, please use the Google form which can be found on the Staff Hub. That's all for this week. Make sure that next week you are wearing your odd socks to show your support for Anti-Bullying Week. You might even get a little gift from the Anti-Bullying Group. Our normal service with our normal presenter will resume next Friday. Until then, goodbye.